Singapore's Yu Meng Yu will be battling for an Olympic medal this evening in table tennis. We'll also be cheering on Joseph Schooling, who begins his defence of the 100-metre butterfly. And it's been confirmed that Tuesday, August the 10th will still be a school holiday despite the postponed NDP. Hello, I'm Harian Tudiman and you're watching The Big Story live in the Straits Times newsroom. You can subscribe to our channel so you never miss a single episode. Let's head straight to the Tokyo Olympics where three Team Singapore athletes have a big night ahead. Singapore paddler Yu Meng Yu has one more shot at the medal when she takes on world number two Mima Ito in the bronze medal match tonight. Her fitness is in question though after she needed medical attention near the end of her semi-final loss to world number one Chen Meng. Yu telling the media after the match, quote, I have done what I can but I just couldn't keep up. I have no regrets. She definitely shouldn't, having already surpassed her achievement of making it to the last eight at Rio 2016. All the best to Meng Yu in the bronze playoff. We'll be watching at 7pm Singapore time. And just a few minutes before that, at 6.54pm, Olympic champion Joseph Schooling will begin his title defence in the 100m butterfly. Look out for him in Heat 5, Lane 8. Will we relive this heady moment back in 2016 when schooling de delivered Singapore's first Olympic goal? Doubtful, unfortunately, with his best time this year, more than two seconds of his Olympic record of 50.39 seconds. And that's slower than his qualification time, which places him at 52nd out of 59 competitors. So we asked our assistant sports editor the tough question. Will schooling make it out of the heats? It is going to be tough, but of course it's, it's possible. This is, after all, the Olympic champion that uh, we're talking about. Timing-wise, he's a little bit off the pace. Uh, he, ha he has been this year. His fastest this year was 52.93 in the 100-meter butterfly. But I think there, is a, there are a lot of swimmers who are swimming faster than that, who have swum faster than that this year. But look, there's one thing about coming into the Olympics. And there's one thing about the Olympics. I think it's also about how do you meet the moment. I also think that you know he's been putting in a lot of hard work and I think he expects to be swimming more than a second faster than he's been swimming in practice. And, and he's going to need that. There's no question about that. I think Joseph is relaxed and I think he needs to be relaxed. Uh, he probably knows that pressure is, you know, is not, is something you just don't want. You've got to find a way to meet the moment. So that's one thing he knows how to do. I think, you know, him him coming, uh, Rio doesn't matter. And yet in small ways it matters in the sense that he knows that at the big moment, he was able to produce a really good swim right through the heats into the semifinals, into the final. So today he needs to produce a really good one. He talked to my colleague Sazali the other day and Sazali told me he was very relaxed. And I think that's what he needs to be. You know, he's been to the games before. He's been in, he was there in London as well. He knows what it's like in the village. You want to be a little bit nervous because you need that excitement in you, that adrenaline to push you, but you don't want to be too nervous. So I think he's going to be a good mix of that. Look, he, he swam World Championships, he swam Asian Games, he swam the Olympics. He knows. Schooling and you both in action this evening along with Kwa Cheng Wen who is also competing in the 100 meter fly. For complete coverage of Team Singapore at the Olympics, visit our microsite at straightsimes.com slash Tokyo Olympics. We're also keeping an eye on the number of COVID-19 cases linked to the Olympics. Organisers announced 24 new infections today, including three athletes. This brings the total cases to 193 since July 1st. And according to a Games spokesman, two overseas attendees have been hospitalised with COVID-19. Neither case is serious and a third hospitalised person has been discharged. Tokyo itself reported 3,865 new cases today, the third straight day of record-breaking numbers. 
Daily highs in Thailand as well in cases and deaths, 17,669 new infections and 165 fatalities. To deal with this biggest outbreak yet, volunteers yesterday turned a cargo warehouse into a field hospital with 1,800 beds for patients with less severe symptoms. And looking stateside, big tech companies are making vaccinations compulsory for their employees. For instance, staff at Google and Facebook must get their jabs before they can return to the office. Similarly, Netflix has mandated vaccinations for cast and crew on all its US productions. And Apple plans to restore a face mask requirement at most of its US retail stores for both customers and staff regardless of their vaccination status. Back home, Apungol Primary School's pupils and staff are undergoing mandatory swab tests today and tomorrow amid a growing cluster linked to a cleaner working there, which now has seven cases. As students arrive for their swabs, the school will also switch to home-based learning for about a week from today until next Friday, August the 6th. The Education Ministry said a teacher and two students have tested positive with investigations ongoing to see if these cases are linked. Another two contract cleaners and one non-teaching staff are also infected. Those three were not in close contact with students and teachers. Meanwhile, Village Hotel Santosa has been added to the list of community care facilities operated by the Health Ministry. So, there are now six such facilities which can accommodate more than 5,000 patients. Just this week in Parliament, Health Minister Ong Kang said fully vaccinated people, 45 to 59 years old, infected with COVID-19 but with no or mild symptoms, can be directly admitted to community care facilities instead of hospitals. In non-COVID-19 news, August the 10th, the Tuesday, will still be a school holiday despite this year's National Day Parade being postponed to August 21st. But schools won't get the day off on the Monday after the NDP. Five months after opening its sales portal here, Tesla delivered its first cars, the Model 3, to customers this morning. The delivery took place at its unfinished showroom come service centre in Topayo, Lorong 8. Tesla wouldn't reveal how many cars were delivered, but the Straits Times understands only a handful was collected today, with more planned over the next few days. In a joint paper outlining 12 recommendations on gender equality, PAP's women and youth wings are calling for workplace anti-discrimination laws, full flexibility for couples to share parental leave, as well as allowing women to freeze their eggs for non-medical reasons. Additionally, advocacy group AWARE has released 88 recommendations, including efforts to tackle gender-based discrimination against pregnant women, single parents, women with disabilities, domestic workers, the LGBTQ community, and Muslim women. These reports go towards the government's review of issues related to women and gender equality, which will culminate in a white paper that will be introduced in Parliament later this year. Let's kick off this week's live picks with a revival of Tapau Nation, where senior food correspondent Wong Ayo reviews delivery food. Hi Ayo! Now you have two picks for us today. The first, the lauded Birds of a Feather restaurant at Amoy Street. It actually waives the delivery charge, which is a plus point for us, definitely. What else is great about this place uh, that can withstand the Tapau journey? So they call themselves a Western restaurant with uh, Sichuan flavors. But for me, a lot of their dishes are actually very Chinese. Uh, what I like uh, 
to order from them would be the noodle soups because noodle soups actually you would think that won't travel well but this restaurant packs them separately the noodles are separate from the soup so what you just need to do is just heat up the soup when it reaches your home and then add the noodles and voila you get a very very nice bowl of uh, noodle soup the one i order is king prawns noodle which comes with like big crunchy prawns and a very spicy broth so if you like spicy food yeah go for that the other dish that i ordered which i like very much is uh, fried crispy pig's intestines this also travels very well because i like that the chef stuffs it with leeks which turn very sweet after they're fried so it's a it's a fantastic combination well, Ayo, next one that uh, you're going to talk about is 8 Degrees, a Taiwanese E3. There are two uh, Taiwanese uh, street food that I love very much. And this restaurant has both of them. Uh, one is Mi Sua, which is like a starchy noodle soup. And usually uh, it comes with oysters or pig's intestines. And this restaurant has both. And you can actually have a bowl with both of them. And uh, that's what I ordered because I love oysters and I love intestines because of the chewy texture. The other dish uh, that I like uh, from Taiwan is, uh, in Chinese, it's called lu rou fan, which means pork belly rice. And the version in this restaurant is good too. They do it slightly differently. Instead of uh, dicing the pork, it comes in uh, thin, thin uh, pieces. But it works as well. The dish, the, the sauce for the dish is delicious. And it comes with an egg, which is quite nice. Uh, and there's also a bit of uh, pickled vegetables, which add a nice bit of uh, acidity. Uh, it helps to cut the fat from the, from the pork. So it all together makes a very nice dish. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Ayok. That was Senior Food Correspondent Wong Ayok. Now be sure to check out his Tapau Nation column every Monday and Wednesday as part of Life's Stay Home Guide. Also something to enjoy without leaving your house, the Esplanade's annual Red Dot August concert series, which will be live streamed in full. Here to share more is music correspondent Adino Abdul Hadi. Welcome back, Dino. Could you highlight some performances for us? All right, so it starts uh, this Sunday, 1st of August, and um, I'll probably be catching the, the first one. Uh, that's That will be indie pop singer-songwriter Krista Joy. Uh, she's kicking off the series uh, with a live stream show that starts uh, at about 8.15, I think. Yeah, so Krista's a, a 23 years old singer-songwriter. She first made headlines back in 2018 when she won the National Art Council's Noise Music Award and also that year she was among a batch of budding young artists who were mentored by seasoned musicians in the homegrown music scene uh, through the NAC's Noise program. So I think last month in June she released her second full-length album Embrace the Progress. Uh, it's got songs about celebrating small wins in the face of failure and adversity. So there's a lot of there's a lot of really positive messages in the songs there. And um, it's a follow-up to her first album, uh, released in 2019, Enjoy the Process. So I'm guessing that we'll see her play original songs from these two albums. And then uh, so we've got uh, Tim Dakota. He's performing on National Day itself, uh, August 9th at 8.15. Now, Tim is a, he's a soul R&B singer, songwriter, and a fantastic bass player and uh, you know from what i understand it will be just him performing solo with his bass guitar and some effect pedals uh, so back in 2017 uh, tim released his debut album the warrior and um, he's always talked about how he's currently working on uh, new songs for his second album for an upcoming album we don't know when that's going to be out but um, I'm expecting him to play, you know, original tunes from his first album, The Warrior. And who knows, maybe we can hear him play some new songs for the first time uh, during his set. And, um, you know, Red Dot August, it's almost uh, a show daily from what I understand. And uh, it goes all the way until the end of the month. And 
the end of all. Thanks, Dino. As the name suggests, Red Dot August runs for the entirety of next month. Visit the Esplanade's website for more details. Let's look ahead to a movie that's out today, Jungle Cruise, headlined by Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. Film correspondent John Wee is here with a quick review. Hi, John. This is the latest film to be based on a theme park ride, Pirates of the Caribbean being the most famous of them. Did you like Jungle Cruise or not and why? I liked it, but I wish I liked it more. You see, all the ingredients are there for a big fun movie and it's there, you know, Emily Blunt, Dwayne Johnson, they play the adventurer and the boat captain going down the Amazon in search of a fabled plant. Um, then they meet all kinds of bad guys and they have adventures. I mean, the formula is there, it's great. I just wish that it had a bit more weirdness. And you can see that, you know, on another film based on a theme park ride, Pirates of the Caribbean. I challenge you to remember all the good guys and all the villains but one thing that you can always remember are the horror bits you know you remember captain barbosa and his cursed uh, ship of pirates and all their weird ghostly bodies you remember bill nye as Davy Jones, you know, the guy who's part crab, part octopus. Those are the things you remember from Pirates of the Caribbean. And Jungle Cruise has some of that, some of those supernatural horror things, but I wish there was more. Hmm, you're right, something to ponder about. Well, thank you so much, John. Jungle Cruise opens today in cinemas. It's also available on Disney Plus Premier Access from tomorrow. You can check out Life's A Stay Home Guide on straightstimes.com where you can also find more news and videos. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the red button below. I'm Harry Antodiman. Stay safe and see you tomorrow.